Well, I'm sure by now you all think I'm completely, com completely, completely crazy, but that's totally okay because I like lecturing on things that very few other people like lecturing on, especially inter-observer agreement. Um, so keep in mind, we're going to look at inter-observer agreement. You may have heard this as inter-rater reliability, but we're going to beat that out of you today. So why don't you just step right up and take your lashings? Seriously, like stand up here and I'm going to again and again. And I'm really not a violent person, but on these videos, it sure sounds like I am. Why? Because these particular issues need beat into your heads. Not literally, but you, God, oh man, sometimes I swear I just digress. Anyway, um, so yeah, um, these issues are important and uh, I don't want to ever hear you really refer to this as reliability. There's a reason and we'll get into that. Okay, anyway. <laughs> because it doesn't say anything about accuracy or reliability. When two people agree that something happened, that doesn't mean it's a reliable finding. It just means that they agreed. There's a lot of problems with thinking that that's a measure of reliability. The number one thinking, maybe, maybe, maybe it didn't really happen. Maybe they're just like one person's trying to please the other person. Maybe it's just agreement, right? Accuracy. Maybe you're You've both agreed that uh, calling the dog brown should never happen. And you're going to replace the word brown with the word red. So you call the brown dog red. And everybody says, oh, look, a red dog. But then in reality, the dog's grand brown. It's not accurate. Stupid, stupid example. But think about it in terms of definitions of things like, oh, I don't know. Imagine the police coming up with a really weird definition for stopping. Like they have, right? You don't just stop and go. I mean, you got to stop and you got to wait for three seconds and then you got to go. They came up with this really accurate definition, this specific definition, to make sure that we all agree that a person has stopped. So they give you a ticket if you haven't stopped for long enough. Hopefully, if they're doing their job, they give you a ticket. Or if you do really well, then they pull you over and say, hey, great job at the stop sign. I'm really impressed. You're setting a good example for the rest of the citizenry. If that's a word. Anyway, so whew, I'm digressing again. I apologize. Anyway, so inner observer agreement says nothing about accuracy or, re or reliability. Just about how much two people agree on something. Which is really about believability, which if you ask me is equally as important as accuracy and reliability. Why? Because you could have the most accurate data in the world, you could have the most reliable data in the world, and no one will believe you. That's kind of sad, isn't it? I mean, isn't that the state of science all the time? Science is always screaming about something. That's the most ineffective way to teach. You should never feed your kids juice before say, X years of age or months of age or whatever. You should never do this. You should never do that. And they have very accurate data. But it's like, everybody's like, yeah, but I don't believe you. They don't believe them because they don't understand the methodology, but that's a different issue. So my point being that validity, uh, the, blah, 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 not validity, but believability is drastically important, um, as much so as accuracy validity, or reliability. All right. Um, the method that you use to calculate your observer inner observer agreement produces different results, folks. This is one of those little bitches of science that it's like, man, dang it, which method to use? I don't know. I can't tell you which method to use. You got to decide. And no matter what you decide, you're going to be wrong, and you're going to be right, and you're going to be wrong, and you're going to be right. You're going to that battle's going to weigh in your head. Like I don't know which piece to use. You just do your best. All right. So anyway, here we go. Let's get some more. The question really is this: What is accurate enough? I don't know. I mean, do, do you have to agree 100% of the time? You got to agree 90% of the time? You got to agree 75% of the time? 80%, 60%? I don't know. Everybody has a different rule. Um, I've seen researchers and people use 90%. I've used people, seen people use 85%. i have been a part of a research team where we were forced to agree, which was really weird because I disagreed with people, but yet we wouldn't leave the room until we agreed. So finally, we just got tired of staring at each other's faces and we said, fine, we agree it happened. That isn't real agreement. That's forced agreement. And that's really stupid. I don't like that at all. And if you were the faculty member that made me do that, then you know that you're doing it wrong. Anyway, here we go. This is a big one, folks. Total agreement. It also sucks. <laughs> we're going to take the total number of behaviors and we're going to divide it. We're going to, sorry, that was stupid. We're going to take the, we had two people. Let me explain the graph before I just explain all the numbers. So we're going to use an inner observer agreement procedure called total agreement. So the count, all right? So we're going to count the behaviors. Um, this is a, in a duration sort of setting or latency or whatever. So we can use this in all sorts of different types for different types of behavior. Counts of behavior, durations of behavior, latencies of behavior. So it counts how many times it happened, duration, how long did it happen forward, latency, how long from the stimulus to the response, right? Whew. We got that out there. So these are good for all sorts of things, but this particular procedure sucks. Let me explain why. So we have five minute intervals and then we have the numbers of behaviors that occurred in each interval. Each row is a different person. So row one is me, row two is you, all right? So uh, row one, I saw it happen two, four, three, five, zero, zero, three, one, three, four. You saw it three, four, two, three, zero, two, three, two, four, five times. So what do we need to do? We need to add up each row. 
So your obs observations divided by my observations or whatever. I don't know which one's highest and lowest. So we take the smaller total and divide it by the larger total. Look, we agreed 86% 80, of the time. But here's why this sucks. Look at the next set of numbers. So again, five minute intervals. I saw it two, four, three, five, zero, 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 whatever. You saw it zero, 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 three, two, four, five. Notice that in no point except the middle two intervals did we actually agree. However, I saw the behavior happen 14 times and you saw it happen 14 times. I'll be darned, we saw it accurately 100% of the time. If you believe that, I got a bridge for you, man, girl, whoever you are. The point is, folks, think about this. We can set this up to where you didn't, where we, you and I didn't see anything at all the same ever, but yet our formula says we did. We agreed 100% of the time. This is why I hate total agreement. Let's move on. Exact agreement. These are nice ones. Okay. So this one's really, really accurate. Again, same sort of scenario for measuring behavior or types of behaviors. Notice we're just looking at intervals where we agreed. So the first interval is I saw it two, you saw it three, right? No agreement. Next one is an agreement because we both saw it four times. Next one, three, two, no. Next one, five, three, no. Next one, zero, zero. Hey, we agree. Next one, zero, two. And then three, three, yay, we again. And then never for the rest. So three out of 10 is 30, all right? Now, this was the same data set, right? So look at the data set now as the previous screen. I'm gonna back up. Okay, so look at this. We're at the bottom line here. So we're back at total agreement. It says we agreed 100% of the time. Exact same data calculated differently using an exact agreement procedure looks like this. Total number of agreements divided by the total number of our intervals equals 0%. In that second set down there, we did not agree at all. At no point did we agree on our data, and it represents that. That's exact agreement. Um, so that's a, a exact agreement of occurrence. Anyway, there's other ways we can do exact agreement of non-occurrence, and the, there's all sorts of layers here that if you were in a BCBA program, um, you would get into, but we're not, so we won't. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Interval agreement. These are good when you're using partial or whole, whole interval or momentary time sampling or just time sampling and, uh, or you know, duration type behaviors. So we're using X's rather than numbers this time. So we agreed in the first one, not in the second, not in the third, yes in the fourth, yes in the fifth, yes in the sixth, not in the seven, yes in the eight, yes in the nine, and not in the ten. So six out of ten intervals we agreed in. Notice we have agreements of occurrence and agreements of non-occurrence here. We could break this down again into agreements of occurrence versus agreements of non-occurrence, um, and but we're not going to do that for the sake of this particular lecture. Actually, we are. <laughs> here we go. This is what happens when you don't pre-plan and you don't read your lectures five seconds before you write before you record them. Um, anyway, so uh, this time we're going to only count the inner observer agreement for occurrence is the top half, and then the bottom is the um, non-occurrence. So we're only going to look at intervals that have X's in them. If there are intervals where, where one or both of us have an X, okay? So the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, not the fifth, not the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth, right? So that means we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So four out of those eight intervals we agreed. We agreed in interval one, in interval four, in interval eight, and in interval nine. So we agreed about 50% of the time on occurrence. Um, if we do non-occurrence, now we're looking at anything where one of us observed nothing, right? So interval two, interval three, interval five, interval six, interval seven, and interval 10. So now there's six intervals, but we only agreed twice, which is intervals number five and number six, because we both saw nothing. So we only agreed 33% of the time in non-occurrence. So these are some very simple ways to calculate inner observer agreement. Remember, this is not reliability, um, but this does speak to believability. So we want these numbers pretty high. Historically, for us to really trust our data, we want these above 85%. Some people say 90, some people say 80. I, I picked an arbitrary number right in the middle, 85%. Why? Because I don't know. Some I probably read it in a paper somewhere sometime, you know, 730,000 years ago um, because I'm getting old and been doing this stuff for a while. Anyway, I don't really know. There's no really set requirement here, but a high number is it makes it harder to get, but it also makes your data more believable. Um, this speaks to a bigger issue, which is that we should always have two people observing something at the same time independently to make sure we can get an accurate assessment of that behavior. And I also understand, because I work in the real world, that that might not actually be possible. Anyway, we'll come back for more on something else later. Take care. See y'all.